Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we are once again talking about another Chinese open source model that is really changing people's sense of what is possible in the field of AI today. Now, to put this model release in some proper context, we have to go back to January. It is now coming up towards the end of the year, and of course, this is the time when I start to plan out my end of year coverage, which is a big time for reflecting on the year that has passed and what's to come. And any end of year big story recap is inevitably going to kick off with the big story from January, which was, of course, the release of DeepSeek. When Chinese lab DeepSeek dropped their reasoning model, it caused an absolute tizzy in the AI industry that even sent stocks reeling. Now, there were three big reasons that DeepSeek was such a big deal. The first was that it totally changed people's perception of how far behind us China really was. Up until that point, people were working on the assumption that when it came to model development, China was meaningfully behind the U.S., and DeepSeek seemed to suggest that wasn't true. The second big reason for concern, and the one behind the big stock wobble, was that at the time, it had appeared that they had achieved those results at significantly lower cost than big U.S. training runs. This made everyone question the incredible amount of resources being spent on the data center build-out. The third reason DeepSeek was such a big deal was more on the consumer side. When they released their R1 reasoning model, the chatbot app that housed it actually dethroned ChatGPT to become the number one downloaded free app on Apple's App Store for iPhone. Now, what was interesting about this was that DeepSeek was not the first company to release a reasoning model. At that point, OpenAI's R1 had been available for a number of months. The difference was that DeepSeek made it available for free, meaning that for most people, it was their first experience with a reasoning model, which of course, if you've ever experienced the jump from a non-reasoning to a reasoning model, is just a fundamentally different LLM experience. So this is what kicked off the year and set the tone for a number of different conversations that we'd be having throughout the year. Now, more recently, the whole China element of this story has heated back up in a big way. NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang recently said in very stark terms that he believed that China would win the AI race because of their disposition towards it. And even though, by the way, all these outlets are reporting that he backtracked, for my money, the backtrack was kind of more just a reaffirmation of what he was saying while trying to present a slightly more positive spin like the U.S. still had a chance. Along with the rise in AI skepticism among market investors, there has also been a surge in the idea that China isn't building as many data centers and that perhaps the U.S. is overbuilding then. Investor Gordon Johnson went viral with a tweet that said, Question for the AI bulls. The U.S. currently has around 5,426 data centers and is investing billions to build more. China has around 449 data centers and is not adding. If AI is real, why isn't China building thousands of data centers every month, which they could clearly do? Semi-analysis's Dylan Patel responded, Where did you get the idea that they aren't adding? Not as much as the U.S., but China has thousands of data centers and are building many more. Your data source sucks. Now, the substance here is less important than the narrative and the fact that, once again, China's actions become the big foil for the U.S.'s. And this is the setup into which the new Kimi K2 thinking model was released. The new model was released by Moonshot last Thursday with claims of outperformance on major benchmarks. The model purportedly leads both GPT-5 and Claude Sonnet 4.5 on Humanity's last exam, which is a general knowledge test, on Browse Comp, which is a test of agentic search, and Seal Zero, which is a test of the ability to collect real-world data. The model lags slightly on major coding benchmarks like Sweet Bench Verified, but not by much. Didi Das of Menlo Ventures wrote, Today is a turning point in AI. A Chinese open source model is number one. Kimi K2 Thinking scored 51% on Humanity's last exam, higher than GPT-5 and every other model. 60 cents per million tokens and two and a half dollars per million tokens output. The best at writing and does 15 tokens per second on two Mac M3 Ultras. Seminal moment in AI. In other words, the point that Didi is making here is that in addition to performing well, it's doing so cheaply and in a way that's efficient enough that people could run it on their own hardware. Now, in addition to scorching the benchmarks, Moonshot claimed the model is capable of 200 to 300 sequential tool calls without human interference. If that's true, it would make it incredibly capable for agentic workflows, frankly, head and shoulders above many of the Western frontier models. Indeed, according to independent testing from artificial analysis, Kimi is now ranked ahead of GPT-5, Claude 4.5 Sonnet, and Grok 4 on agentic tool use, and there's a fairly significant gap. Some, like Dan Mack, suggested that this might be enough to delay the release of the next generation of models as the Frontier Labs go back to the drawing board. Referencing that same recent quote that we were just talking about from Jensen Huang, the one where he said that Chinese AI is nanoseconds behind America, Dan wrote, 
Jensen is right. Look at Kimi K2 thinking. Watch for delayed releases of Gemini 3, Opus 4.5, and GPT 5.1. Delays signal they are not clearly better or cheaper than Kimi K2 thinking. That is evidence that the USA is indeed falling behind in the race. Said Machina, Kimi K2 beating Gemini 3 would be, well, humiliating doesn't even cover it. Think about what Google has. Decades of data, the best talent money can buy, infrastructure that runs the internet. And they're sweating a smaller team's model? That's not supposed to happen in tech. The big guy wins always. Maybe not this time, though. Now, part of what has people excited is that the model is open source, so people were running their own tests over the weekend. Pietro Sherrano, the CEO at Magic Path AI, wrote, Kimi K2 thinking is incredible, so I built an agent to test it out, Kimi Writer. It can generate a full novel from one prompt, running up to 300 tool requests per session. Here it is creating an entire book, a collection of 15 short sci-fi stories. LXE gave the model the task of balancing nine eggs, a book, a laptop, an empty plastic bottle, and a nail to try out its reasoning. The model came up with a counterintuitive solution of arranging the eggs to support the book as the starting point, then adding the book, laptop, bottle, and the nail in turn. LXE remarked, Kimi K2 thinking is the only modern reasoning model in recent memory that provided a human solution to this on the first try. Now, another big shift here is that Chinese models are now right there with the U.S. models on coding. AI coding has been the breakout killer use case for this year, and frankly, that's probably been something of a comfort for the Western companies, as this is one area where they've continued to maintain something of a lead. At the beginning of the year, Claude 3.5 Sonnet was the premier model with no close competitor. Since then, later versions of Claude, GPT-5, Gemini 2.5 Pro, Grok 4, all have vied for the top of the leaderboards and API credits from developers. Increasingly, though, Chinese models are catching up if not to the absolute state of the art, at least presenting a very compelling cost-to-value trade-off. Kimi K2 Thinking is clearly better at coding than Claude 3.5 Sonnet, the model that everyone was using just a few months ago, and it's being served at a fraction of the cost. In a recent article, the information suggested that that competition is a huge problem for Anthropic in particular, given how much of their revenue is derived from API use for coding. They also point out that looking abroad is an imperative for the Chinese startups, writing, it is critical they find customers outside China who pay to access the AI models through APIs, no matter how low the prices are. That's because it's difficult for AI companies in China to generate revenue from domestic customers, where price competition is fierce, and business customers are reluctant to pay for subscriptions. The article continues, As the overall AI coding market grows rapidly, the Chinese companies are betting that there will be sufficient demand for cheaper and good enough options. And in fact, this is one way that the release of Kimi K2 could end up being different to the DeepSeek moment. If the release of DeepSeek R1 was all about giving consumers their first glimpse of reasoning models that were hidden behind the paywall at OpenAI, Kimi K2 thinking could end up being more about providing a near-state-of-the-art model that could perform in the enterprise at a fraction of the cost. Another interesting shift is that models like Kimi K2 thinking are opening the door to self-hosted LLMs in a way that wasn't really feasible last year. Up until recently, there has been a stark trade-off when a developer chose to run models locally. Previously, you could use open source models to underpin products that didn't need state-of-the-art AI or you could tinker around with them. But for serious advanced production use cases, there needed to be a very significant reason to want the privacy or security of a local model to make up for the reduced performance. Kimi K2 thinking is one of a crop of Chinese models that have reduced that gap. One of the reasons for that is an innovation in quantization. You can think of quantization as kind of like compression for AI models. While the process reduces performance, it also lowers the memory requirements substantially to allow models to fit on consumer hardware. Kimi K2 Thinking, for example, can be quantized down to run on a pair of Mac M3 Ultras, which is certainly not a cheap consumer setup, but it is a realistic rig for a professional programmer or a company. Some are starting to wonder if local LLMs will be a growing trend. I'm not really sure that I'm convinced at this point, but it is possible that we will see certain types of industrial use cases where the balance of value that you get from running locally does shift things, and that will be an important trend to keep an eye on. And while we haven't seen a lot of U.S. enterprises all of a sudden adopting Chinese models, there are growing reports that the startup ecosystem has already made the switch. Bloomberg opinion columnist Catherine Thorbeck wrote, In recent weeks, a subtle shift has become increasingly apparent. Speculation has been stirring for months that low-cost, open-source Chinese AI models could lure global users away from U.S. offerings but now it appears they are also quietly winning over Silicon Valley. She referenced Chamath Palahapatiya commenting that one of his portfolio companies has already moved major workflows to Kimi K2, which he said is, quote, frankly, just a ton cheaper than OpenAI and Anthropic. That same week, Airbnb CEO Brian Chesky said that they hadn't integrated with OpenAI because the connections aren't quite ready. 
Instead, Airbnb's new service agent is, quote, relying a lot on Alibaba's Quen3 model, which Chesky said is very good and also fast and cheap. Mira Marathi's Thinking Machines Lab is also building on Quen3. Cursor's new in-house coding agent, Composer1, is rumored to be built on top of a Chinese model. And Hugging Face downloads for Quen have recently overtaken downloads of Meta's Llama models, suggesting a shift in user patterns for open source AI. Referencing that same Jensen Huang quote, Thorbeck wrote, It's premature for Huang to declare a winner. The U.S. still has clear advantages when it comes to access to cutting-edge chips and computing power, but Beijing's low-cost and open-source push is undoubtedly attracting developers, the backbone of AI innovation. If Washington truly wants to come out on top in the long run, it should start by asking why Silicon Valley is already switching sides. So what's the net of all of this? Kashyap Patel writes, Kimi K2 thinking is more important than O3, not because the model is better, but because of what it signals about the future of AI development. For him, there are a few different elements of this. First, that the open source lag is now measured in months, not years. That basically we've seen the closed model advantage window collapse from more than 18 months to three to four months. That China is treating AI like they treated electric vehicle manufacturing. In other words, not trying to match the West, but trying to lap it on price and accessibility and competing on economics. And then this observation, the real race isn't to AGI, it's to democratization. He writes, who cares if you build AGI if only a thousand companies can afford it? Kimi K2 provides frontier performance at commodity prices. That's the game. Dean Sakaransky thinks that the agentic capabilities update is the real deal here. He writes, In July 2025, models could not effectively call tools, three to five tool calls max. Then Kimi K2 released, and every subsequent model has been post-trained for tool calling. Now we have agents that can run for an hour and 30 minutes. This is the quietest and most significant advancement in recent memory. Bindu Reddy writes, in spite of all the closed source drama, the biggest story of 2025 has been open source agentic models. Three new models dominate the cheap mass market agent space. GLM, Kimi K2, and Quen Coder are all amazing, with trillions of tokens being used every day. That leads to a prediction from Bindu 2026 will be the year of open weights. We will see at least two US labs enter the arena. Kimi and GLM will push to close the gap in agentic coding. DeepSeek will finally release R2. We will have state of the art image and video generation models. LLM developer community will explode. Now look, obviously one of the subtexts for a lot of this show is around the geopolitics of this, but when it comes to consumer choice, it's hard to see all of these advancements as anything but incredibly valuable. New frontiers of performance and cost are being pushed, bringing the efficiency and affordability of everything down, and that's going to mean all of us being able to do even more with these models than what was previously possible. Pretty interesting stuff, obviously a lot to keep track of. For now, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always, and until next time, peace.